Oh, baby. Hello, Nasty. Hello there. Hello. Hello. I say hello. Hello, hello. friend. Well, hello, little girl. Hello, my treacherous friends. Hello, operator. The big gang of everything. Welcome back, my friends. It's showtime. Hey, welcome to. Th- oh, my God. It's the brink of sanity. We're actually doing an episode. What is the brink yeah. of sanity? The Brink of Sanity is a uh, seldom recorded podcast that uh, has been neglected since the uh, rise of our other show. But we're back and we're doing a show. And we have Dylan Brackett with us today. How are you doing, Dylan? Oh, I am doing so good. And, and I must say, that theme song just gets better every time. Well, thank you. Uh, I decided to try and get as many copyright oh. infringements as I could into one intro song. <laughs> Dylan, I, would you say if the Brink of Sanity was a puppy, based on the, the neglect, it would have already been put down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, not, not often. Not often recorded, I must say. It's been, it's been difficult. Um, you know, Mark decided yeah. to uh, like raise a family instead of do the podcast. Yeah. No, what did- Sure. I know. I know. Unbelievable. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Dylan is is the junior senator from California. Mm-hmm. We're, we're we're pleased to have you on the show. He's going to be talking about Obama and politics the rest of the show. Dylan, tell us, <laughs> was it tough winning the Senate seat? <laughs> it was so tough. I I had to kill so many people. But then the, the problem with that is they can't find out about it. So it, I'm I'm assuming that gets complicated because then you gotta hide bodies in water and go to ponds in the middle of the night. We seem badass, so I try to say it on it. I try to tell as many podcasts about it as I can, so people will respect me and fear me. <laughs> yeah, you want to keep the fact that you committed murder in total secrecy. So thank you for announcing it on our show. Yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to keep it straight. Is there something wrong? With- um, so Dylan, um, I've heard you, uh, are funny. <laughs> I heard you're, you're, I've heard, I've, I've heard Jay has told me, um, that you have a band and you're a comedian. I'm not a comedian. You Actually, made the worst comedian part. A blog. Um, I do write a little humor blog thing, but I'm more of a musician. You want me to send you a link to a song? Sure. We could play it during the break. All right, uh, different yeah. from most music. You might. Are we going to yeah. be afraid? Is this going to be? You might be afraid. Be some, very afraid. Some death metal stuff going on. What, what, Dylan? What kind of music do you play? Well, I guess I would say avant-garde or experimental. This new song I just sent. Does the avant-garde link. mean? Does avant-garde normally mean not good? <laughs> or is the I'm just kidding, sorry. Uh, what what is it what is your who are your influences? Maybe that'll be helpful. Okay. Um big fan of Robin Gristle, the nineteen seventies band. Not really influenced by much at all. Who did you say Strawberry Alarm Clock? <laughs> no, uh, I heard Milk and Thistle. Throbbing Gristle. Oh. Not familiar with so that. So Dylan's on a, um, a less than good connection. Our show in general never sounds that good, but um, we're going to a lot of times play Guess What Dylan Said throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all right. You are on a cell phone? I am on a cell phone. Now, uh, do you want to you, you hear this, uh, this story? Yeah, I like stories. Let's hear a story. All right. Well, this this one time, this was when I was um, around eight, I believe. I visited a a Negro American ran clothing store called Steel Reserve with my mommy. Um, (laughs) Did you say a Negro? What kind of ran clothing store? Yeah, no, you got it right. You're hearing the connection, correct? Negro American ran. That's the blue. Okay, I, I just want to make sure I actually heard that. Go on. (laughs) <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, <sighs> some, expo- some exposition. My, br- br- my, my big brother once told me a joke that went, um, 
Janet Jackson doesn't even need a, ma- a mask to look like a monkey. She was coming off of that uh, hot play of the apes. I I did not understand that I was racist because I was like eight. And so I thought he was just being like, man, she's ugly. Mm-hmm. And so I told the joke to the black guy that still was there. That's kind of funny. <laughs> and you're still alive to tell the story. That's impressive. So you told the story. So you tell uh, the joke, and what's the reaction? Uh, well, as you can imagine, and, uh, an awkward, like, the guys were just like, oh, yeah. You know. And then uh, me and my mommy returned to our shop. And looking back, I'm, I'm absolutely enraged at my 8-year-old self for being such a naive imbecile. <laughs> I'm amazed your mom... Uh, actually continued shopping and didn't run out of the store. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, as, an eight, as an eight-year-old, you really wouldn't know better. So it's like you can't really that be mad, mad at your eight-year-old self. No, but everyone would probably be stink-eyeing the mom. Here, here's a question for you. Uh, I have a question for both of you. Let's say you have a kid that's like seven years old. Someone told me this. Okay, let, let's say that. And so you have a seven-year-old kid, son, and he turns to you one day and goes, hey, why are all the NBA players black? What would your reaction be? Like, what would your honest thing, what would you say to your son? I would uh, say... Uh, go ahead, oh, Dylan. Sorry, are you asking me or are you asking... I'm asking that both other, of you. That other bloke. All right, well, he, he should go first. All right, I would okay. say um, they're not all black. Steve Nash is still in the NBA at 47. <laughs> there are a lot of Europeans also, son. It's just the white American that can't play. They're all the guys sitting on the bench, not playing. They're too busy owning the team. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, would you, what would you say, Dylan? Well, I would say that it's because all of the team owners are filthy racists who hate white people. <laughs> That's you, my you'd raise a fine child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's one, oh. of those, you, you, that's one of the things I think my answer would be, Oh, look at the time. Uh, you you got to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, my kid would be in bed a lot. They ask a lot of questions that are just unanswerable. Yeah. Actually, we'll oh, find uh, out soon. Mark is probably a year or two away from having to answer those questions. Uh, I, think he's little, I think he's a little bit longer away from having to formulate that kind of question. <laughs> too bad the show will be long gone by the time you have those stories. Yeah, your, your kid's like uh, 16 right now, right? Yeah, he's 16, and he can't formulate a full sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully in a few years. Uh, he's eight months old, so um, it's okay. You didn't, there's no reason you ought to know that. Um, so, Dylan, let me ask you. So you're in an avant-garde band. How many people are in the band with you? One. It's just you? It's just me. You know okay. who's race? Tyler Perry. He only puts his fellow Negro Americans in his movie. Well, no, sometimes they have a white guy, and he's like the nerdiest, corniest guy on the planet. It's actually... Oh, yeah, that's what really gets my blood boiling. <laughs> it's my actually, blood. like, yeah, according to Tyler Perry, every white guy is like uh, like a white version of Steve Urkel. Um, <laughs> I think Tyler, yeah. Tyler Perry's next film, which will be called Tyler Perry Presents, I Have a Whole Lot of Money and No One, see, no one You Know has Seen My Film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah who's watching these films? I mean, he is so goddamn rich. He composes out a movie every other month. It's unbelievable. I, every movie does well. I think it's one of those things where, like, some, it's like some people are watching it earnestly, but then, like, a lot of people are just being like, this is so dumb, and just, like, you know, doing, watching it I, ironically. Well, he's the, um, he's the he's black. He's ironically made a billion dollars. He's the black <laughs> Ernest. You remember Ernest Goes to Camp, Ernest Goes to Jail? He, he's just, oh, I used to love those movies when I was a kid. And I'm sure there's a whole group of people like that for all these Medea movies. We've just never met them. I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess it's like kind of kids more that watch them, maybe. You want me to tell you some facts about Sasquatches? Of course. Um, uh, you know what? I was dying to hear some of those facts. <laughs> all right. Well, they're hairy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Harry and the Hendersons. First Sasquatch. Could you, could you do me a favor? Could you differ, hey, could, when you give your description of Sasquatch, could you give a description that differentiates a Sasquatch from, say, Jay? They're both hairy, so that doesn't differentiate. You got to differentiate. 
All right, well, well, here's another similarity. There are shut-ins <laughs> who can only be lowered out of their caves by the smell of jerky. Yeah, so you far know, I'm a Sasquatch. Right? Yeah, so far you're just making Jay sound like a Sasquatch, and I don't think Jay's an actual Sasquatch, so Maybe how is Jay different from a Sasquatch? Oh, let me think. He has a soul. I'm like, the Sasquatch is. I did not know Sasquatches had no souls. This has been a very informative podcast so far. Yeah, when you see a Sasquatch does do like an evil deed, you can't really get mad at them because they just have no soul in the first place. I'm not saying they're evil. I'm just saying, you know, dogs don't have souls. Why should Sasquatches? So you're saying the movie All Dogs Go to Heaven was a lie. It's a blatant lie. My God. For one thing, dogs can't go to somewhere that does not exist. My entire childhood just got dashed before my eyes. There was a... I don't know what that sound was. Um, are we still in the air? They're coming? Yes. They're, uh, um, they're coming. There's a, outside my office, I'm going to interrupt with the story. Um, there, I've been in my, my current job for over six years. There are these people who are preachers, basically. They have like a microphone. There's, we're in the middle of Times Square who basically preach about everyone's going to hell and they have to accept Jesus. And every day they have like a new thing they're talking about. And I was walking by yesterday or the other day and they, they were saying, ah, they're saying, they're like, you do know in hell, you're not going to be able to go to the movies in hell. There's no TV shows in hell. There's, there, hang on. There's, there's no candy in hell. There's no gay marriage in hell. And I was like, I thought the last one actually would be in hell. I thought that's the one thing you guys are pretty sure those people, all those people are going to be in hell for getting gay married. I thought that was your big push. So yeah. does that imply it's in heaven or it's just uh, they think it's like, you know, Candyman that it's just. Uh, I just thought based on these preachers, you get to hell and everyone like you automatically have to be gay married. Yeah, exactly. Every, everyone's gay and in hell. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like in hell you get there. You're like, OK, um, hey, Jim, do you, I, you want to be you want to be my gay, my gay lover? <laughs> I think we have to do that here. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird thing to say. Yeah, it was really out of nowhere. It was really like after they said like about movies, they were like, you no know, gay marriage. And I was like, I almost want to start stop and talk to that guy and ask him where he came up with that part. And but where it, he thinks it exists then. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> where is the gay marriage? <laughs> now, uh, you know what I don't understand? Like the devil, he's supposed to love like partying and doing all that stuff. I don't understand why he's being so mean to people who should be like friends with him. You'd be like, yeah, let's go out and murder some people. I fun. But no, he's torturing them. So you, like, think you, you think when you get to hell, it should be some dude that makes you stay out too late. Come on, man, it's 4 a.m. I just want to go home. Let's do some shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that friend who always wants to do another round of shots before you leave. Come on, come on, just come on. One more shot, then we'll go. Come on. <laughs> wait, wait, hang on. I'm going to sing this for karaoke. Wait till I go up there. I'm just going to see if I'm going to sing uh, Believer by Monkeys and we'll go. Really good at this song. Did you hear how Davy Jones died? How he died? Or that he died? That he died. How'd he die? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but now that Davy Jones is dead, who, tell me, who is going to haunt the high seas? Mickey Dolans? <laughs> Peter Nesmith. I know all, all the right. monkeys. This is unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> Dylan. Yeah, Sasquatch. Or, I didn't tell you that. That's another fact about Sasquatch. The, the plural is uh, Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Um, are, are what, all is, Sasquatch is, what is Sasquatch love on Sasquatch love? Like, what is Sasquatch and Sasquatch? How do they have sex? I think it's love their bristly, coarse hair together. I don't know. Sas- I think that was I think that was an avatar actually. Sasquatch yeah. style. Really hitting me with the hardball question. I'm not like <laughs> So um I want to ask you so your avant-garde avant-garde band yourself um you play like you play much like in front of like audiences? No, this music is too crazy. It's more of like a studio kind of thing. Okay, so that pretty much probably kills all my questions about how have you ever gotten laid based on the music or any groupies whatsoever. No, I have not. I try not to tell anyone I know about it. 
<laughs> I know would like it at all. It's not like Nori's music. Like, you just like, bang ah. a bunch of pot and pans until the cops come? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that avant-garde, but it's still very off. What do you what do you do in your uh, in your working time? What do I do in my working time? I study because I'm a student. Are you are you in college now? High school. High school. All right, so uh-huh. here's okay. the thing. We went to high school in the Stone Age and cell phones didn't even exist. Yeah. Uh does this every was about, This was about 200,000 BC, right? Yes. We uh, we actually wrote on scrolls. Uh, well, parchment came like uh, our senior year. You wrote, on, you wrote on trolls. Scrolls. Oh, scrolls! I thought you said you wrote on trolls. Well, we did that too. Like, That's I mean, <laughs> there was, actually, back when we went to high school, like like freshman years, when they invented language. So yeah. that's like when learning really took off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was uh, much school done before then. It was just mostly like. Just hitting stuff, learning how to hit correctly. Yeah, yeah. We just uh, would, like they would like give you a like a big rock, and you'd hit some woman over the head, and that she'd be your wife. Yeah, there was a oh, lot man. of grunts. I just love rocks. They're like my favorite. It was a series of grunts and throwing feces and <laughs> hair pulling, and uh, it, it wasn't very productive. But um, <laughs> so, so here, how long you, how, how long have you been playing the avant garde music? I don't know. Jay, were you going anywhere with your high school stories? Well, yeah, I was. I was going to ask. Um, <laughs> I, I know you're really stuck on this avant-garde music uh, thing, but um, <laughs> we're going to talk about the entire show. Well, no, we're not going to talk about the end of the entire show. Um, I, my question was: I, I started going back to school, and I'd say over half the people now sit in class with the cell phone out, like next to them during class, because like. God well, forbid something happens on their phone for and they miss it like for five seconds. Is yeah, that, I know that's so stupid. It's like I'm I'm Gen Y or Gen X or whatever mm-hmm. in between those two generations, but that is just stupid. You should be like doing school while you're there. Are, are they yeah. do do they do that in high school now? Does everyone have their cell phone on their desk? Yeah, yeah, some some people do. I I just don't understand that. Like, it's very strange. What is going on on your phone that's so amazing that you can't go two minutes without looking at it? Yeah, I know. It seems like the majority of stuff one gets on Facebook, like notifications, is like, hey, you look good in that picture. And I have a question. Like, when, you, when, you, when you communicate with your friends outside of actually talking to them, like in person, what's the, mm-hmm. what's the form of communication you use the most to talk to them? Is it phone calls, text message, Facebook, or smoke signals? Wait, or split single? Smoke signals. <laughs> Smoke signals. Because that's what we had to use. Yeah. What, what, how, just in general, I'm actually serious. What, what kind of, how do you communicate? Is it text messaging? Is it Facebook? What is it? Uh, mostly, mostly in person. Well, I mean, besides in person. Oh, oh, yeah. Like school's I out guess. and, you know, you're either on your way home or you're home and you say, oh, I want to uh, contact my friend. You're like, I just heard the funniest episode of Brink. I need to talk to one of my friends and tell them about it. How do you, te- how do, you do it? I get phone because texting, it's just so hard. Why do people do that? I don't understand. I'm completely behind you on this one. I, I, I get open-ended text, and it's like I'm not really going to type you back a paragraph. Well, my yeah, favorite part yeah. is the text message. People ask questions that require way too much of an explanation yeah. on text. Yeah. Like, they're like, how was the operation? Yeah. It was oh, awesome. Good. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, open-ended questions like, you know, how uh, how is your week going? It's like, okay, well, unless you want the word good, like, you're not getting anything else. How did it go with the birth of your child? Good again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, let's, let's try to stay on this Sasquatch topic. You guys are really derailing me, okay? <laughs> let's just slow it down. I'm feeling a very charged energy. You know? we're, we're being very unprofessional. So, uh, okay. Uh, what's your next Sasquatch so, fact? Okay, so my question is, is there a Sasquatch that goes to your high school? Well, you know, it's an all Sasquatch high school, and I kind of have to put on... It, it's much cheaper to go there. So I just kind of... My parents make me put on a Sasquatch costume that they made for me. So, like, I can go there 
and get cheaper education. It, it's very really complicated. You don't want to hear about it. <laughs> uh, it well, you know, Yeti, plural is Yeti. That's uh, that's the fact about Yeti, I guess. Oh, Sas- Sasquai are uh, big fans of 90s post-rock bands. Like? Why? Post-rock? Oh, you didn't get that? So, like, I was on the kick of, like, the plural Sasquai and Yeti. And then I remembered in the 90s there was this uh, kind of instrumental rock band called Mogwai. And then I slipped that reference in there. Oh, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I thought you said post-rock, and I, I, was, uh, I am not familiar with that term. No, oh, it's just like rock, but after, I don't know. That's just what the Wikipedia page says. It's uh, everything auto-tuned. <laughs> Once rock died, no, everything obviously. became auto-tuned. <laughs> you know, so this happened to me yesterday. So there just to, just to jump in, I want to jump in quickly. Post rock is a subgenre of rock music characterized by the influence and use of instruments commonly associated with rock, but using rhythms and guitars as facilitators of timber and or uh, and textures not traditionally found in rock. Post rock musicians often produce instrumental music. Timber is wood and textures is fabric, so I don't get how this is music at all. I, I have you. Ever- um, I'm trying to figure out some post some post rock bands. Um, let's see. Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> <laughs> Including Cul-de-sac, Tortoise, and Mogwai. I don't know what oh, any yeah. of that is. Yeah. Maybe King Crimson would be a close rock band. King, King Crimson? Crimson? Yeah. But they were from like the, what, 70s? 60s? No. No. Yes. No. <laughs> when okay, were they no, from? No. Um, <laughs> who's your favorite post rock band? I'm not into post rock. But if you were, your reference that threw in there. If you were, let's say, let's say you had captured a Sasquatch, and you were going to play the best post rock music for him, who would you play? I don't know anything about post rock. But not then the good. Sasquatch is not going to know much about post-rock either because you've captured him and promised him a great post-rock music and he's yeah. not going to get it. Yeah, if you're going to be the Sasquatch uh, expert, you're going to have to know their bands. You should know a lot about post-rock if you're going to like, talk about Sasquatch. I don't think I clarified you guys. And I haven't been saying anything about Sasquatches. I'm just talking about people who visit the Sasquatch Music Festival. Oh, okay. Are those, uh, are those like Juggalos? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Not juggalos, more of like an indie rock thing. I feel like people's heads are going to be hurting around this point of the show. Who's playing in this year's 2012 Sasquatch Music Festival? <laughs> it's always Mogwai. <laughs> <laughs> it's just eight hours of Mogwai. I don't keep up on the festival circuit. What is the official Brink of Sanity show stance on uh, festivals? On Festivus? Yeah. You mean from Seinfeld? Yeah. It's based on a real man. Or, well, Wikipedia says that a real dude came up with that like 60 years ago. I am for it. How, do, how does that make you feel? I don't know what you're saying. You say Festivus? Yeah. For the rest Fe- of us? Yeah, Festivus for the rest of us. Oh, uh, it was made up prior to Seinfeld? Yeah, he's saying it was a real thing in, like, the 60s. Oh, okay, sounds great to me. I'm for it. Yeah, why not? I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just a messenger. I'm, I'm Wikipedia's messenger. Well, uh, we, everything in Wikipedia is true, so we'll go with it. Well, uh, that's, you don't need to tell me that. Do you, I have a question. When you write papers in high school, do you ever cite Wikipedia? I'm not big into writing papers, you know? Let's what? say you did. Is I he, imagine men, there are classes in high school that require that. Well, I'm not you ever research too... on like, Wikipedia? Are you, allow, are you allowed to cite that? On on because I, I remember I was not when I was in college when it first came out. Well, that would be dumb because Wikipedia cites other reliable sources. So you, you just you just cite their sites. Their their what they cite basically. Yeah, that that it would just take like um, 
a little bit of extra time. Well, aren't we the same we, age? I don't think Wikipedia was out when I was in college. Oh, well, when was this? Uh, okay, maybe they, maybe they just talked about the internet back in college. I don't know. Um, all right, there was barely internet when I was in college. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know, I know how you feel. We had, Dylan, we had this thing called dial-up, where we actually had to call oh, a phone number yeah. to get online. And uh, uh, porn took a very, very long time. Like, really like JJ long. Like, JJ actually just finished downloading when he was downloading back in college. Yeah, it, <laughs> the picture just came through. Is that your music what? background? I just heard a uh, kaleidoscope. Could you play some of your music for us? I'm dying to hear it. <laughs> What's that? Could I, I want to hear your your music. I don't think you could just play avant garde music. I think it's a series of tracks. Can we just play it, yeah, please? Yeah. Well, I do have a. I do do this thing called prepared guitar that I can play you a little bit of. Is our most like, acts of guitar prepared? Uh huh. Go on. Just go on. All right. Well, it's where you put a bunch of crazy stuff under and over the uh, strings of the guitar. Oh. Make a little noise for you to see if you can hear it. I definitely heard Did something. You? I don't know what I heard, but I heard it. Yeah, and then I got a prepared ukulele over here. It's got a pencil. Uh, kind of, and I'm going to flip the pencil and it's going to make a weird vibrating noise. <laughs> That kind of I'm surprised you don't t- you don't tell more people about this. What's that? I'm surprised you don't tell more people about this music. Oh yeah, it's really just kind of uh, a really something that most people can enjoy and accept. Yeah, when did you? Really, how did you first get into your avant-garde music? I used to, uh, this was around December 2010. This was uh, about a billion million thousand years ago. <laughs> Um, yeah, a long time ago. And you know, Malcolm Gladwell says that you have to play anything for 10,000 hours, do anything for 10,000 hours before you become really an expert and, like, the top at it. So in maybe about 10 years, you could be the top avant-garde artist out there, as long as you're going to practice 10 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, I guess I do it for, like, an hour and a half, two hours a day. You need to up it. You need to quit school and just practice every day, and soon you will be a top of the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm actually curious. Uh, like, this is interesting to me since you're in high school now. Do you, do you know what a beeper is? Let me interject right here. <laughs> I have something serious to say. Okay. Wait, I have a question. You're in high school. Can you name all four of the Beatles? Do I upload videos? Can you name all you four name- of the vid- Beatles? Ah, sorry. What? The Beatles. Do you know that? Do you, you- have you heard of the Beatles? Oh, the Beatles. Yeah, they were a major influence, you know, on all the, like, uh, all the glitch noise and uh, prepared guitar kind of stuff that I do and the, uh, all the screaming. and. Can you name like, uh, all four Beatles? Can you name a Beatle? I can name every single Beatle. There was um, Davy and- Jones. He was uh, he was the lead singer, I think. Uh, Will I am? Uh, ah, Yoko Ono, yeah, yeah, she was the drummer, and uh, that that's all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know all the all the Beatles. Yeah. And I thought high school kids did not know about this stuff. Oh well, I'm no dummy. I'm just goofing you. I know all the Beatles. There's uh, John. John Paul, Pope John Paul, no. Um, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, John Lennon, and um, Paul Beatles, Beatle Cartney. I, don't, I didn't know where I was going with that. Now, where, 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 hey, where, are you, where are we calling in from? Like, where are you? I'm in beautiful, sunny 
California, except I'm in the only part of California that's not actually very Beautiful. sunny, which is Northern California, pretty much almost at the border of Oregon. Huh. I really don't know anything about California. I oh, know. yeah, you don't need to. It's a bullshit state. I hate it. I could point Oregon out <laughs> on a map, so I guess I'll just point a little bit lower, and that's where you are. Why? Why do you think? Why is it? Why is California a bullshit state? Because you guys. Oh, is okay. that it? Because. Um, <laughs> what? How do, you, how do you like President Obama? Are you a fan of him? <laughs> well, we don't need no Nick. I did not understand. If Obama that. was running against Romney and they were both running against a Sasquatch, who would you vote for? Who's the best out of the three? Yeah. Romney, Obama, or a Sasquatch? Well, I would say... And keep Sasquatch. in mind, before you, answer, before you answer this, Obama said he'll use your avant-garde music in his inaug- when he's elected. Romney has banned um, avant-garde music and uh, promises to ban avant-garde music, and the Sasquatch makes avant-garde music. Well, I would say Mitt Romney is really the best because I really agree on his opinions on, you know, gay marriage. They're, they're in a, those motherfucking abominations. They should explode instead of not exploding. You know what I'm saying? Huh? So you're pro exploding. Oh. What's that? You're on the uh, pl- pro exploding party. <laughs> Hey, Joe, yeah. what's your what's your what's your favorite high school class? What's my favorite Janet <clears throat> Sure, just choose your own question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, here's how we'll do the interview. Mark will ask a question, you'll just answer any random question that comes into your head. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you feel like talking about. <laughs> I will ask you, what is the capital of Nigeria? If you want to talk about post rock music. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what I love? I don't. I, I, I assume Sasquatches <laughs> and... Actually, I was going to go, go with Yetis. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Never mind. It, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever. What do you love? So, I, I got another story to tell. I know, but okay. I want to know what you love before you go to that story. What do you so love? Are- we're, we're not going to listen to your story until you tell us what you love first. Tell us what you love. It could be mom. It could be dad. I just want to know what you love. Um, I love dogs. Okay. No, let's hear your story. Go on your story. <laughs> be thrown into an incinerator. I hate animals. Um, I guess I love old men. I guess I love this funny story I have to tell you. Do you want to hear I sure do. Just go into the store. You don't have to ask us. Yeah, the suspense is killing me. Okay, so let me just clear this. Do you, do you want to hear the story? Can I tell it? We've never wanted anything more in the history of this podcast. <laughs> so there I was in the gas station, just uh, minding my own business, standing in front of the newspaper rack, when an old, old man walked in. He was uh, smoking a cigarette, which in a gas station is probably illegal. Not very old. And there's only like one gay guy in there, so it, it wouldn't really be worth it. I realized I was blocking the newspapers and I wasn't even reading it, them or picking one out, so I moved. Sorry, I exclaimed. You're not sorry. You do this all the time. He replied. I chuckled. And then he took one of the newspapers and kind of rolled it up. As he was walking towards the counter, he just like smacked the woman on the back with his rolled up newspaper. How does that story make you feel? I feel like you, you're either able to paint a uh, a bright picture with words, or oh. you wrote that down beforehand because that was pretty amazing. I did. I, I wrote it. With, yeah, yeah. So I have a wretched story to share. Also, I'm glad so, you came prepared because some people don't come prepared for this show. I did. I have like a text file on my computer right now called showcontent.txt. It's got like eight <laughs> stories on it. Excellent. 
Yeah, it's got the the Sasquatch thing on it too. Mm-hmm. We're finished with it. Now. Okay. Yeah, didn't seem like you guys wanted to hear it. I don't know. Uh, we, we figured we'd pepper in the Sasquatch content throughout the show. <laughs> well, speaking of peppering things in, I get some pistachios. You probably have like pepper on them. So, so there I was eating some pistachio. My stars! I exclaimed. <laughs> there was a cartoon on one of the pistachios. My stars! I exclaimed. Wait, no, I already said that shit. <laughs> I, I would give a ring a ding 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 ring a ding ding to the company, which is Walmart's World Table brand, by the way, with name cartoons in a pistachio bag. But since I threw away the offending cartoon immediately. I have no evidence that it uh, really happened. Everyone knows that people are just always calling them, uh, calling them, reporting fake cocoon sightings with no evidence whatsoever for their own twisted amusement. Amusement. What should I do? Yes, I need. I need your help. So, did you get that, Mark? I'm just tuning back in. I have no idea what anyone said. Were you Were you attending to baby drama? I was telling the baby drama, yes. Okay, so he got some pistachios, and there was a cocoon in there. But they were Walmart's world table brand. Let's keep that in mind. We're dealing with a huge corporation. Right. And so he, got, he threw it out before he was able to record evidence of this cocoon in the pistachios. <laughs> so now he wants to know what to do. Uh, my advice is uh, cocoons rarely go uh, in groups of one. So you go back and you buy the whole case of pistachios. Three months ago. Uh, yeah, I don't think pistachios sell that quickly, though. You'll probably still get them from the same case. No, I, 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 um, I threw away the bag, too. Hmm. What do you think, Mark? Um, I agree with the Yeti. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and we are going to play a commercial and then we'll be back with more Sasquatch pepperings and uh, insanity. This is the Truth or Truth podcast with Brandon, John, that's me, and whomever we feel like having a guest on the show. Feel free to check us out at www.truthortruth.com. Follow us on Twitter at truthortruth.com. Find us on Facebook and find us on iTunes. Here's a little bit of one of our recent episodes. I remember when I was in junior high, and there was a, I finally understood a song, and I giggled every time I, I heard it on the radio. Song Come that. together right, right now, now over me. What's that about? I'm pretty sure it has to do with ejaculation. Do you know what that is? An ejaculation, actually, if you look it up in the dictionary, is a very quick prayer. Right. So, to the Lord Jesus. To the, to, the Lord, to the Lord Jesus. So it is perfectly normal for a priest to tell... Children, to go home and practice your ejaculations. It's okay. perfectly normal for a priest to ejaculate in front of a lot of children. You are. You're using very correct English right now, John. Um, like, let's say, I don't want to bring up a sore subject for you, but on the subject of where your brother is stationed, if there was a priest praying in Djibouti, he could ejaculate in Djibouti. He could. Right? So there are priests <laughs> right now ejaculating all over Djibouti. <laughs> they are spread out from the east and the west in the corners of Djibouti, ejaculating all over that. They're over. not. I think they're pretty much in the middle of Djibouti. In, in the middle I think Djibouti. the ejaculations are pretty much right, centered. Right where the action um, is. I think there might be some ejaculations running through Djibouti <laughs> as part of a movement. I think there's a movement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back with... Uh, Yes, Dylan and Mark. And yes. I'm fun. Mark has a low blood sugar level today. I do. <laughs> this is what happens with our Sunday night shows. Um, we need to have our alcohol-fueled Friday shows back. They're better on Friday when we're drinking a lot. Yeah. Or at least in our minds they are. It's always better for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Oh, uh, you know what? I was going to play a bunch of voicemails, but I think they're all from you, Dylan. Uh, oh, wait. No, I, I tuned out. I, I zoned out for a minute there. Can you just repeat everything you said in the last part? Nope. We're moving on. 
This is a forward only show for now on. Yeah, it's just personal. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need um six three one six seven six one one eight one is the voicemail number. Um, so I yeah, work. Call in with voicemails. Um, Dylan does. It's not hard to do. It's uh. It's- Hard at all. It's easy, in fact. Easy as one, two, three. So you didn't like our last guest host? I, I, uh, I didn't really want to go into this, but I absolutely <laughs> did. Okay. You did not like him or did not did like him? I hated him. <laughs> but it would take down. Like that bulimia story? <laughs> bulimia story yeah. might have been a little I, depressing. Yeah, the only reason I laughed during that was, like, because I couldn't believe that was a story brought on to a comedy show. <laughs> and I kept bringing it into, like, politics and stuff, too. Mm-hmm. It was weird. Nothing says serious comedy like like serious medical ailments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, do we have any more Sasquatch uh, facts? No. No, that was it? Okay. All right, just making sure. Uh, what, what was your next story, Dylan? <laughs> well, um, I've got a story about my cousin. Okay. Uh, he, he, he came over to my cabin the other day. Uh, it was my cousin, William. You live in a uh, cabin? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it was my cousin, William. It's like William, but with a bill instead of Will. Mm-hmm. It was a real treat. Uh, he let me he let me read some of his playbook, which is very strange since I can I can easily I can easily buy my own and I I have no idea why he did that. That's um. Cool. Oh yeah, he told me all about his uh, adventures. He made a he made a pilgrimage to his homeland, the Orient. He said that he found out the re- reason why they have slant eyes over there. It's because on that side of the earth, the sun is so close, they're constantly squinting. Is there any member of your family that doesn't, that doesn't tell you um, bigoted jokes? <laughs> <laughs> Does your mom, like at night, put you down to sleep by telling you about how the Jews uh, run everything? <laughs> he also told me about his uh, wife, Billy Amiana. You know, Billy Amiana. He said that she was a uh, foxy butte and that he wanted me to give him help with her needs. She's what? He said that she was a foxy butte. Oh, foxy he, butte. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that he wanted I could have heard like, freaking mute also, and that would have been just as interesting. Uh, <laughs> and that he wanted me to give him, to give him uh, help with her needs. And then I helped him uh, move her, her dresser. She had to get a new dresser. Well, anyways, he's a real great fella. If you want to contact him about his, well, his business is he goes to your house and, like, just does, like, some, some landscaping on your gingerbread houses. Like, puts in some, like, gingerbread bushes and trims the gingerbread bushes, that kind of thing. Anyways, if you want to contact him about that, give him a call at 1-800-GINGE or email him at Jay, could you book, could you could you book him for next episode? Yeah, um, is that like with three E's at the end? Because you know, I need seven numbers. <laughs> also, yeah. if I'm uh, if I'm interested in a gumdrop sidewalk, will he be able to accommodate me? Or email him at sexyboy at aol dot com. That's uh, that's with two X's and an I. And boys spell B O I. So you wouldn't think that would be an email for a landscaping company, but it is. <laughs> yeah. So that's how he rolls. Also, yeah. I just want to say, you know, this appearance is sponsored by AOL.com. You know, just if you need to do some internet searching or uh, set up an, an internet and electronic mail account, or if you're just trying to catch up on the sports news. About sports. Go to AOL.com. See, this was before your time, but um, back in the um, beginnings of the internet, we actually had to get a disc with AOL on it 
And that came with a phone number that we had to call to get on the internet. And they'd send these discs to every man, woman, and child on the earth. And everyone if, had three to four discs have been, have been sent to that by the time they were 20 years old. And those discs had minutes on them. And when they run out, um, they would want to charge you for more. And then when you went to cancel, they would say no. And it was mm-hmm. a big battle every time you wanted to. This is true. Uh, it was like a huge battle if you wanted to cancel your account. You people were back then. Yeah. In the 80s. It's a, it's a bunch of goddamn dumb fucks. It was, it was like the Stone Age. You go, I want to cancel. Like, you know what? I'm just going to sign you up for six more months. How does that sound? It's like, no, no, I really actually want to cancel. Like, yeah, well, it's only eight ninety nine a month, so we're just going to sign you up, all right? And it, it would go like that for about an so, hour and a half. Speaking of, something, speaking of something totally different, mm-hmm. have you guys seen the commercial for that movie, John Carter? Yes. No, I haven't. So that movie apparently was cost $250 million to make. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> Are you getting farther and farther away from your computer? <laughs> um, I'm tying uh, myself up. Apparently, it's not, it's apparently, it did, apparently, it did. It did very mediocre at the box office its first week out there. And I just had a, I had a question: Had anyone heard of John Carter, before, like this 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 book, before it actually came out? I had no idea what that was. It just seemed like yeah. he spent $250 million producing a story that no one heard of before. Yeah, I've never heard of that. This is mad sad. By the way, that's uh, Portman 2 I came up with. It's uh, Portman 2. It's a delicious combo of of uh, madness and insanity. So just uh, try to split that one around. Yeah. We'll, we'll pepper that in there, too. Does it come with bacon? <laughs> yeah, pepper it to your conversation. You know what? Um, here, Here's some advice for all you listeners out there. If you watch a show and something big happens, don't post what that thing is one minute after the show ends, because some people may be DVRing it to watch it after they do their podcast. Oh, Oh, I know what I know. It's Jay. You're looking at Facebook and someone posted on, um, walking dead that nothing happened. And Uh, now you know the episode's ruined for you. (laughs) It was like the entire season was leading up to this moment. And some asshole posted it 30 seconds after the show ended. I've not uh, seen it yet, so don't don't ruin for me the uh, the craziness that must have happened. I won't. There's, went, there's nine straight from, episodes where nothing happens, and then something happens, and one dipshit ruins it the second it ends. I know. I remember. Uh, I remember you guys talked about that boringly for hours and hours. I know. We were so excited about it, so we thought it was going to be a good segment, and then the show decided to be the worst show ever, yeah. which in turn yeah. turned our show into the worst show ever. Yeah, and like those people who are like they just spoil things and are like, well, you should have seen it by now. It's like, no. Yeah, I I hate those people who are like, dude, it's yeah. already been out for twenty four hours. You should have watched it already. It's like, listen, some people actually have things going on with their lives and might not watch or do things instantly. All right. And even I even disagree with them when it's like, you should have watched the Sixth Sense like ten years ago when it comes out came out and it's like no i i wasn't even in its demographic then Dude, yeah i should have watched it when i was four uh, thank you yeah i'm just going to read things that are uh, totally related to what we're talking about i'm just reading topics of news off of google right now <laughs> and there's, <laughs> there's one oh, headline oh. that says lsd may help alcoholics give up drinking says study and i imagine the study is by by the most fun doctors in the world. <laughs> it's like um, side effects may be extreme LSD addiction. <laughs> most awesome doctor, most doc, awesome doctor ever recommends more weed. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that scientists are uh, working on making rat milk edible? Like that episode of Simpsons. Um, I did not know that. And I don't know. It's probably not too much different than other milk. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that episode of Simpsons, though? No, I have not watched an episode in over 10 years. That was... I have actually seen that one. Is it in the last 10 years? I forgot when it was, but it was like the mob. (laughs) I think they like... I think it was like they privatized the school cafeteria. 
and so like the mob was taking care of it, Fat Tony and stuff. And, yeah, like, it they was were just it's rap milk. It was right on the fringe of when we stopped watching Mark. It's probably like uh, season com- eleven. I do this a lot. My my computer's at seven percent right now. Yeah, Mark never charges his computer before the uh, podcast. I'm just gonna randomly cut out at some point, and you guys can continue the show without me. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. You you don't seem to care very much. Uh, that'll probably well, end up being the show timer because uh, it's actually late over here on the East Coast. And you gotta go to bed anyhow. <laughs> I gotta tell one more. I gotta tell you guys about one more thing, real quick. Sure. Okay, so I've got a great idea for uh, Seagram's, you know, uh, Seagram's mixers, Seagram's... Uh, yeah, wine coolers, right? They do, like, the Seagram's mixers, and uh, they do, like, Seagram's ginger ale, mm-hmm. too. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, they should install a little uh, little noise module on the, on the side of the box, um, and... And uh, whenever it's got a motion sensor too, so whenever you walk by the thing of Seagram, it says, Arr! <laughs> Sorry, we don't mean we try that. Arr! <laughs> Seagram. And if you don't open it, uh, it's not good. You'll yell, Hey, fucker! Freak me! And you, uh, then you call the company to complain because that's absolutely terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think LSD will cure that the problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, before you know, I was getting real, real low on Showtime. Yes, we are. Uh, we are in the last five minutes of the show. All right. Well, can I give a, a plug? Yeah, absolutely. You can plug whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, well, first I want to plug AOL, of course, and then uh, you need to talk to my turn. Uh, and then. The best place to catch up on all your uh, on all your Dylan stuff. I have a Twitter feed where I do jokes. That I guess could be similar to the kind of humor you've heard on the show. If anybody likes it, um, at D I L L I N five two three. Five two three. Spelled all wonky. Yeah, you like eyes. I mean, it's not me who likes the eyes. It would be my mother or my pet and my or my pappy. My mammy or my pappy who likes the eyes. Mams and paps. Very against A's and O's. They just hate those motherfuckers. Alright, well, you know, I's a good letter too, I guess. So yeah, uh yes. But it, yeah, my Twitter feed there will be like links to new songs and links to my blog and jokes. All sorts of stuff. It will be so much fun. All right. Dylan523. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Mark, you wanted to hear a, a clip of this um, avant-garde. Here, here's the clip. It's loading up. You should start at like one minute. That's when it really juicy. Okay. I think Mark's computer died, but uh, he'll listen back. All right. So uh, oh. at Dylan523, if you want uh, links to more avant-garde music. Which, of course, everyone does. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they? I mean, it's the most kind of relatable, uh, accessible genre there is in music. I'm, I will fully be expecting to hear it on the radio tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've got a record deal with EMI, a 28 album deal. Because I release, like, a new album, like, every month. I'm always very busy. Very prolific of you. Yeah, it's very prolific. This new one is called General's Nightmare. Excellent. So, uh, thebrinkofsanity at gmail.com. Thank you so much for coming on, Dylan. It's been a blast. You're welcome. And uh, keep the voicemails coming. And um, how did you find out about the show, anyway? Um, I forgot. Um, I think I was, like... There was some sort of post on a website or like podcast, and then someone commented like, "You should listen to this show." Hmm. It's 
something like that. Okay. And I, you know, I'm always you curious know, about how always people find this. You try find this on the internet about what podcast this is. Well, yeah, ran, random links on the internet are always safe to click on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, thanks again, and uh, it's time for the goodbye song. Goodbye. Bye. I'm gonna leave you. It's the end. Goodbye. Goodbye. Just leave me alone. Feel so good to say goodbye. I'm sick and tired and I'm saying goodbye. Goodbye, girl. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Everybody. I love the Brock show.